Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Festive Squares Throw. This was an accidental fun find on Yarnspirations. This is a Christmas holiday kind of idea but of course you can change the colors and make it anytime or even a year round project. One thing I find with Yarnspirations.com is that their search engine is really quite interesting. So if I go and put in crochet Christmas blankets I get a certain amount but if you change certain words like instead of using Christmas like to festive or new well or silver bells or anything you can see completely different results in the search engine. So sometimes we have to think outside the box when we're using the search engine. So what we have here is this really kind of a neat idea. It's not really, it's got a little bit of texture but not enough to brag about but it's also using an older yarn that's been discontinued. Let me tell you a little bit about that because if you're upset that the yarn is gone actually you shouldn't be because I'm gonna tell you why. So back many moons ago, here's my story and I used this yarn before, Red Heart Celebration yarn. I'm not sad that it's gone. Um, I did use it for a Ferris wheel that I did once do. This yarn technology has changed in time. Remember how silvery things or shiny things in yarn used to have a scratch? Well this is one of those yarns that had that. So when you were using it, it would give you irritation across your hands. So this one particular yarn in time has been discontinued which I would agree that it should have been anyway. Because technology has now allowed them to do that silver, uh, silver stuff and the shiny stuff without the scratch. So time changes and so does uh, the evolution of making yarn. So this particular project was done in that yarn. It had, it was like boucle almost and I had a little bit of a sparkle to it. So I'm just gonna be using Red Heart Heat Wave or Red Heart Heat Wave today. You can use Red Heart Super Saver, Bernat Super Value, Karen One Pound and we're gonna be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook. So there is six colors. So let's talk about the color breakdown for this. I know what you're thinking. A lot of yibber yabber right off that bat. So there's total six colors. So I decided to, I looked at the colors and because it's discontinued you know you gotta find what you want. So I chose six other colors that I thought were gonna be good. So I looked at the sample and I said I really like this aqua blue here for the border. I'm gonna keep that. So when I was doing my colors I just wrote down A, B all the way to F and then I just looked at the yarn and you can see that I changed purple with the aqua because I realized C is actually the border and kind of moved things around. So I kind of made that commitment when I did it. Also what I do is that I write on the ball bands of the colors. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G or E, F. <laughs> There's no G today. Um, but I write that on the ball band so that I never forget. So if I'm just looking at it. The other thing I did with this particular pattern is that if I just bring you in a little closer as I'm working through it you can see that I am writing down my colors as I'm going. So th this was pink. So you have to make a certain amount of these. How many do you have to make? It says make the first square and it will tell you how many that I need to make. So it says 42 squares is what we need all together. So how you speed your way through this whole process I used to be a car designer at one point like an, a technician and what I would do if I were you is see how you have all the red. I would do all 42 of the red section first. Then come back and do the next layer which is the green for all 42 and keep building it that way. The reason for that is that you only have to read the instructions a couple times and you'll get it into your head and then you can just keep copying and copying because you know what you're doing and you can speed it up. It's why they design car or make cars in an assembly line. Everybody has their specific tasks so that when you get to a certain area you already have it in your head and you're ready to go. So I think that's enough jibber jabber. There is no diagram today. I am going to be demonstrating the whole process with you uh, for making a square. I'll show you how to join it as well and we will also cover the border. So without further ado let's grab our five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and let's begin to play. I said we were gonna get started but we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. So here's a sample because I'm gonna do the final one with you. I'm gonna show you how to join it. So in order to show you how to join it I have to do the homework in advance. But you can see what I did is I just used my own color palette of what I wanted to do and it turned out pretty cool. Um, if you'd like to be more random this would be a great scrap gan afghan too. Okay I promise let's go. <laughs> let's get our hook and let's begin right now. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. This is an intermediate level by Katherine Eng. And what we have is that we're gonna create that slip knot, put it onto the hook and chain four. So one, two, three, four. This is using the color F. In my case it was pink. And I'm just going to insert my hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through. So let's begin round number one. So keep this yarn going. So chain one and you're going to single crochet inside of this ring. So single crochet and then chain two and you're gonna do that eight times. So there should be eight single crochets 
hitting into the inside of this ring. So I would just say this is the second one and then chain two and this is the third one. Chain two, fourth one, chain two, fifth one, chain two. Just make, just push it around if you don't have enough space and then the sixth one, chain two, seventh one, chain two and then the eighth one. So we make sure that you do the chain two after the eighth one. So chain two and you're going to join it to the very beginning. So before you do that make sure you can count all those spaces. So you'll see eight chain two spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and this one that I'm about to join with the first single crochet makes you number eight. We're going to continue this one then and we are going to do something I've never done before and we're gonna move on to round number two using the same color. So what we need to do is that we need to play with the center ring where these other eight single crochets are lined up to. I've never done anything like that before. So I want you to chain one and this will give it a little bit more flexibility and I want you to go to the space that is in between the two single crochets on the center ring and use that space on the same ring and I want you just to go into that ring from behind and single crochet and then chain four. So one, two, three, four. The center ring where you're popping out of go to the next space in between the next single crochets and coming from behind around the center of the ring and single crochet. So it's gonna sit in behind. So chaining four, so one, two, three, four and then go into the space between the next two single crochets. And I want you to do that all the way around. This is round number two and I'll see you at the end of this round. So just concluding round number two. So you should be able to count four chain four spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and this last chain four space is the ending and you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning. I would also recommend in this particular pattern is that we have to deal with our loose ends especially right in the beginning because there's not a lot to grab onto to hide things. So what I would recommend that you do is just get rid of those tails as soon as you can. So I would do that on all your samples or all your pieces as you're going. This red one here you'll never be able to hide it later. Um, it just won't work out in this pattern. So just take your tapestry needle. I'll only show it to you one time and then just go down through the spoke section on the back side and just pull through and hide that in there. So go through once and it only takes you just a couple moments and go back and forth three times and then you can safely get rid of this and then you don't have to gift out an afghan where these tails are gonna fall out on you because they will fall out. Let's not deny that today. So it's a no denial day. So because we have just now gone and I did that chain one. This looks perfect in comparison to the other one that we had where it was being forced to sit down on the one side. So this is a better option. For round number three we're now gonna change to the wrong side. So see how it's smooching up like this? It's a little kiss. Okay, we want to turn it over and look at the back side and begin round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're gonna use the color um, with color E. In my case it will be green. So looking at the back side of the project we wanna do a slip stitch and what I'm gonna recommend to you is do a standing single crochet in the chain four space. So just go into any of the chain four spaces. It doesn't matter which one and you're just gonna scoop the yarn and pull through and you'll have two loops and just pull through the two and that's a standing single crochet so you don't have to chain one. Um, this pattern does give options just in case you're curious about that. You're now gonna chain four so one, two, three, four and you're immediately going to jump to the next chain four space. Do you see how you can't hide that? So you're gonna need to do a tapestry needle at the end of that. So you're just gonna do a single crochet at the end of each one of these chain four spaces. So chain four and then single crochet in the next chain four space and do that all the way around. This is round number three. We're gonna end this color of yarn and then we will need to hide it in but I've just shown you how to do that so you'll do that on your own and I will meet you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way around. So this is my last chain four space. So you should count eight of those and you'll just slip stitch to the first single crochet and you wanna fasten this off. Okay, this is round number three. Take that tapestry needle, hide in the loose ends and then we are going to continue on to round number four in just a moment. 
So let's begin round number four using the color purple. My, it's the color D. So we want to keep looking at the back side of this. So you'll, you'll see that it lifts off on the front side. So just stay to the back on this one. And we are going to join to any single crochet. So not a space, just a single crochet. And you can do a standing single crochet for that too. So just put it onto the hook and pull through. And don't pull it through the first loop right away and yarn over pull through. And that's a standing one. So what this has is that we're now gonna convert over to a square at this moment. So to do that we are going to then chain one and single crochet in the next chain four space. Just like that. Okay and then chain one and in the next single crochet we are going to form a corner. So in order to do that we have to put in two double crochet first. So one and two, chain two and then two more double crochets in there. To move on you're going to chain one and single crochet right into the chain space first and then you are going to chain one and single crochet into the next single crochet and that will complete the middle section of this one side. To restart again chain one, single crochet in the next space, chain one and form the next corner in the single crochet. And that will be two double crochet followed by chain two and two double crochet. Then you're going to chain one, go to the next space, single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next chain four space, chain one and then go into the next single crochet which will be your next corner. So I want you to do this all the way around and at the end of this round then we're going to just join it back to where we had started. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm just coming back to where I had started. So I just finishing a corner chain one, single crochet in the last chain four space, chain one and then just join like that and you're gonna fasten that color off. This color you'll be able to weave in your ends and hide things without using a tapestry needle but that's again up to you. So please get rid of this color and we're gonna move on to round number five using the color A. Let's move on to round number five. So it's asking us to locate the middle single crochet of a side. See it? It's right there. So it's right in between the two. It doesn't matter which one you do as long as it's the middle one. So let's just do and pick the middle one. So we're gonna do a standing single crochet to begin. Pull through and you got the two loops then pull through the two and that's a standing. So in each space and single crochet all the way to the corner you're just gonna do a single crochet. So you're gonna go to the space is the next one, the stitch is the next, the space is the next and then you have two uh, double crochets that you have to fill in. So it's one into each of those and then in the corners what we have in this particular one is that the corners will be one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So just keep on going across the sides so each stitch and chain one space gets a single crochet and we will do that all the way around and remember the corners are one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming back to where it started. I'm just doing the final corner and we're gonna keep this color going on for one more time. If you'd like to change the color that's completely your business. You are the artist after all. Please never forget that. So I'm just coming into all the stitches and then I'm coming to where I had started. So the standing single crochet. To start the next row, row number seven, we're just going to, uh, sorry row number six, we're just gonna chain up one and just apply one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and in the corners it'll be the same thing of one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. So you have double layers of this. Again if you would like to change colors it's up to you and I'll see you at the end of round number six. So I'm coming back all the way around just one single crochet in each except for the corners, one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. You're going to join to the first single crochet that you'd started with and then that's it for this color. So 
you can weave in the ends of this one. Um, you may want to use the tapestry needle if you'd like to. And we're gonna move on to round number seven and the fun stuff of the, of the visual is really gonna take effect after the next round. Let's begin round number seven. I'm using the color pink. It's the color F. Now we need to start second stitch over from the corner. So we see the first one from the corner and now the second right there. That's where we're gonna start. I've never started here. It, I felt it was kind of wrong in the beginning but once you put some faith into the designer you can just bake it really good. So you're just gonna scoop the yarn and pull underneath and then you'll have two loops. That's a standing single crochet. You're going to chain up one and skip the next stitch and go over to the next one after that. So single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch and keep doing that. In between the corners, so don't include the corners, you will see seven of these single crochets in a row. So skipping the next stitch, chain one, skipping that, it's part of that one. So this is where the um, stitch marker, or sorry, this is where it's slip stitched. So it always appears that there's an extra stitch when there's not. So just be careful on that one side. As an experienced crochet, we kind of know that, don't we? So your last stitch will be the second one before the corner. And you should have a total of seven of these drop downs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chain one and go right into the corner space and you're going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet and then start another side. So chain one, skip the first one and go to the second. That's why we started on the second is that that's where it uh, starts after a corner. So chain one, skip the next one and single crochet. So please do this all the way around. Just make sure that you have seven of these single crochets that are all lined up on each side between the corners and your corners are one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet. I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number seven. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just coming into the last corner before I started and chain two and single crochet in the same one and then chain one and then join to the first single crochet and that's it for this color. So get rid of this color for round number seven. Weave in your ends and we'll move on to round number eight using the color E. In my case it'll be green once again. As we move to round number eight it's asking us to use the color E which is in my case it's gonna be green. It's giving you two ways to start. So the instructions for this particular round are really long because it's giving options. I'm not gonna give options. I'm just gonna show you the way to do it. So I want you to come into the first space right after a corner. Okay, so right after a corner and we're gonna do a standing double crochet. So we've been doing standing single crochet. To do it put this slip knot on and pinch it so it does not rotate and just rotate the hook so it captures a piece of it and then going in. Pull through and then that looks like a double crochet right which it is. So you're just gonna wrap and pull through two and wrap and pull through two. And that's a standing double. So that strand here I'm just going to put to a side because I'm not gonna be able to bury that really quite easily. So I'm going to chain one and do a double crochet into the next one. So the next space. Then chain one and then go to the next space. And then chain one and what I want to do is that when I get to the corners, I have to read the instructions when I get there, is gonna be one double crochet, chain three, one double crochet. So it's chaining three then two because the stitch is taller just in case you're curious. So the last one just chain one and go right into the corner. So you're gonna double crochet and chain three and double crochet. And then start a new side. So chain one before you start and then come into the first space and double crochet, chain one and etc. Please do this around for round number eight. We're only using this color for one round and then just I'll meet you at the end of this. See where you have gone over that if you have if you just collect it, the one that strand that's being carried, if you collect it and pull it up into the stitch then it gets hidden even better. So see how it's just dragging there? Just scoop it so that it gets stuck underneath that stitch. And it does a nice separation too. So I'll see you at the end of this round, round number eight. So I'm coming all the way around. I'm coming into my last corner and changing three to turn and then that's gonna be it. So in order to attach to the first standing I have to chain one first 
and then join and I will need a tapestry needle in order to hide in these loose ends for this particular round. So that concludes off this round. This is round number eight. We're getting closer to the end of the of the square. Let's move on to round number nine using the color B. In my case will be silver. So let's move on to round number nine. Nine I'm gonna use my silver which is the color B for me and I want to start off here and it says slip stitch to any DC that's left of the of the corner. So in the right handed it's right there and left handed it would be there as well. So just right there. So let's just do a standing single crochet. This is a nice easy round. Actually most of this stuff is pretty easy generally speaking once you break it out. So do a standing single crochet. So each chain one space is gonna get a single crochet and each double crochet is going to get a single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. In the corners what are we gonna be doing today is gonna be a single crochet chain three single crochet so that we can get around that corner. So I'm going right up over top of the straggler so that I don't have to sew that in later and that's pretty awesome. So do this all the way around. This is round number nine. So I'm coming up to the end of round number nine. Just go into the final uh, corner. Chain three to turn and single crochet into the same corner and then attach it to the, with the slip stitch to the beginning. So you're gonna get rid of this color. We're gonna do one more round and then we're gonna be going into the bordering after that which will attach to neighbors if you have that done. So let's uh, begin to do this. This is the end of round number nine. Let's do ten. Let's begin round number 10. It's the same as round number seven. So if you need a quick reminder I'm gonna show you anyway. It's gonna be like it was with the pink. This time instead of seven being between the edges so don't include the edges it's going to be ten and then you'll have the edges so the, the corners. So let's just attach this and go to second stitch over from the corner. So there's the first one there's the second and you're going to attach and make that into a standing single crochet. Once you get that done you're gonna chain up one, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the next one, chain one and keep on doing that. So keep skipping like you had done this already. So my goal is when I get across just verify that you have ten that come down and verify that you are finishing this uh, two stitches before the corner. So I believe this is it because there's an extra stitch left and then the corner. So let's count and see if there's ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that wasn't in the pattern. That's something that I figured out on my own. So just be aware of that. So chain one to start your corner and then the corner if you look at it it's going to be the corners are single crochet and then chain two and single crochet. You're gonna notice a mistake in the next round but it's not a it's not a deal breaker but I did notice it so I will show you that when we get there. So skipping the first one out from the corner. So make sure you chain one first. Go to the second and do that. So do this all the way around for round number ten. I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming up all the way to around and I'm just coming into my last space. Chain two, single crochet and then chain one and then jump over and, and join to the beginning standing single crochet. So this concludes how to do the square. The next part what we're going to do is how to do the border. Now the border can either be done on its own okay the first time but then after you do the first one you will always have something to attach to so it's a join as you go technique. So I'm gonna be demonstrating that in just a moment but I'm gonna give you some tips before we get too far into this section. So let's begin to do looking at the border next. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration. So we're gonna finish our first square today and I'm gonna demonstrate how all the sides are done. So hopefully you can see that on camera. So what's gonna happen is that when you do your second square when you get to the final edge you are going to join. So when you get there you're going to join the borders. Okay and you'll join to this one. And what I'm recommending is that you do this strategically. So don't be manic about it in the sense of just randomly start attaching it. Be sensible about it because it'll make your life a lot easier. So you can go and attach. So once you get this done you're gonna go all the way down the one side. So it has the instructions for that on how many that you need to do. And then what's gonna happen is that you're gonna come and do the next one up here eventually. And when you put that one in you're going to attach it to here. 
then this one when it goes in you are going to attach to two sides and you're gonna keep doing that each time until you get this section done. So it'll be attached and attached. Here's the trick. These kind of ideas get really complicated if you decide not to attach it consistently with each other. Here's the point. If you're going to attach it, what I recommend is that you start off, let's just start off around. Okay, let's just say I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna attach to one side. I'm going to start here so that I can get a nice good clean border here. And then when I go to attach, it'll start here and then attach, 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 attach and then I'll be back and I'll, and I'll finish it. If it's this one and it's two sides, I want to start here. So I have a nice clean edge first and then I attach, 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 attach and attach, 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 attach and then I have a nice clean edge here. I find it's easier that when you start it that you can get a nice good clean run out at first and then when you do the first turn that's when you attach and your last one coming back out a nice good clean edge. It just makes sense. It is really hard to start a project. So if I was to put another one here, it's really hard to start here and attach immediately versus just letting it work itself out and get yourself comfortable and you'll see it. This particular way that the squares are being joined are very unique as well. So we'll cover that next. When you go to join these kind of squares, what's gonna happen is that the very edge is going to attach to the very edge. And then you're gonna have another one here attach and attach and attach. Here in the middle there's something unique going on here. So this is what you need to watch out for. And then we have attach, 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 attach. So there's literally four attachments here along each side of the center point and one center point. We just gotta watch this middle one on the way that we do it. So when you look at a clean edge, let's take a look at that. You can see that we have the outside and then we have one that's ready to attach right one, two, three. So with that edge, there's your four. Here's your middle. See how it looks unique? That's the one you gotta watch out for. And then you'll have one, two, three, and then the corner is your four. So you have four, four, and one special one right in the middle. And it's special in the middle because of the counting of the way the last round is. So if you're going to screw up, it'll be because you're not following the count here. In between these nubby things, these nod uh, nodules, there's a single crochet that's just sitting there. So you have the corner and then a nubby thing, a single, nubby, single, nubby, and then nubby, chain two, skip a stitch or skip the um, single crochet and then or skip the, the chain and then just come right here. And then you chain one and then do nubby, single, nubby, single, nubby, nubby. So you just gotta watch this one right in the middle. So hopefully I'm explaining it right. It took me a while to understand that. I literally had to draw it on paper in order for me to see it. And when you kinda look at it from this perspective, just kinda pull it apart, you can kinda see it, how the middle is unique in this sense. So let's see if we can try this and let's, <laughs> let's see if we can try it. Okay. So we're gonna start now. When we go to start, what we want to do is start right in a corner. And I'm gonna show you how to do it without attaching to a neighbor and then I'm gonna show you how to attach it to the neighbor when you get there. So the very first one has to be completely all the way around because there's nothing to attach to and then once you have one done, the next one is going to puzzle with it because you have something already done. So let's go right to a corner and it says to attach to a chain three corner space. It's a chain two corner space. It's, it's just a typo so don't, uh, don't get all frantic about that. So you're just going to pull through and do a standing single and then you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. All the corners are always a chain four except for if you're attaching it to a neighbor. So you're gonna just go back into the same spot and single crochet. So there is your corner. Your very next single crochet is that nubby thing and what that is, it's not technical words, trust me. It's a single crochet, chain two and single crochet. But before you can move on, you have to single crochet first and then come to the next single crochet and single crochet. Then chain one 
and then skip to the next single crochet and do a nubby thing. So it's a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So how many nubbies do you see? You see a corner, two, three, and you know you need four of those. So you're gonna chain one, skip to the next single crochet, single crochet first, chain one, and then skip to the next single crochet and you're gonna do a nubby. And that's the fourth one on the one side of it. We're now coming close to the center point. You are going to chain one and single crochet in the next one, chain two, and then single crochet into the next one after that. That's the one that looks off. That's the one that looks kind of unusual. So this is the very center point and you can see if you line it up. So you got the flat kind of chain two and you got the four nubbies. To begin the other side of the center point you're gonna chain one and you're gonna do a nubby. You got it's like a mirror. So you gotta do a nubby first. So chain two, sorry single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain one, single crochet to the next, chain one, do another nubby. So a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the next, and then chain one, and the one just before the edge is a nubby. So it's a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. What's gonna get you hung up on these are these single crochets that are sitting there because it hung me up pretty good. After you get the last nubby in there, you are going to then just go right to the corner for single crochet, chain four, and single crochet. So at this point, you should see that there's four nubbies and the center. So let's start this side. So we already have one nubby done which is the corner and you come immediately to the single crochet. And you're gonna single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So that's nubby number two of the side. And I don't know why I keep dropping my yarn. You're going to chain one, single crochet into the next single crochet, chain one, and then put a nubby into the next single crochet. So single crochet, chain two, single, chain one, single crochet into the next, and how many nubbies are there? There's a corner, one, two, three, so we gotta do one more. And technically I wouldn't be saying that if you weren't on camera with me. I'm just doing that for your benefit so that you can keep a visual record of where you are. After you get this last nubby, you're gonna chain one, skip to the next single crochet, and this is the center point. So at the center point you're gonna chain two, skip over to the next single crochet, and then start the mirror. So start exactly what you have. So chain one and put a nubby in next. Okay and then chain one, put a single crochet in the next, chain one and nubby into the next one. Chain one, single crochet in the next, chain one and there's a nubby in the one just before the corner. So it's working out pretty good. Last night when I was doing it, it wasn't that simple. So it's just a matter of understanding. Once you get the last nubby in there, you're gonna go right to the corner, single crochet, chain four, and single crochet. You're gonna do that all the way around and eventually this will all be completed. Once that's done, then this one will become the first one where it's going to attach. So to attach to a neighbor, instead of just going around solo like this and not attaching, what I recommend to you that I talk to you about is that I would attach it on the first turn of the corner. So let me just take a quick pause here and I'll show you how to um, attach it. So as I talked to you about that I would start getting a clean edge first and then attaching it. So in this case I'm gonna attach it here and here. Make sure that the sides are facing up so um, the good side is facing up. So what we have to do is that when you go to attach, okay, you have to uh, compensate for the slip stitching. So let me just bring in a little bit closer here so you can see what's going on. And I'm about to start the corner. So I have already a single crochet in the corner, chain two to start, come to the chain four on here, slip it underneath and do a slip stitch and then chain two. So that's technically a chaining of four and there's a slip stitch that's grabbing onto the neighbor next door. And come in and single crochet into that corner to finish it. So it's now attached. 
So to do the next one it's the same instruction. So we come into the next one and we do a nubby. So we chain, instead of chaining two we're gonna chain one. We're gonna come to the chain two space that's on this one. Slip up underneath and pull through and then chain one. So it's still chaining a two. I'm just slipping in the middle of that and then I single crochet back into that one to create the nubby on this one. Chain one, go and single crochet the next one so there's nothing to attach. Chain one and come to the next one and that's a nubby. So you're gonna single crochet, chain one and go to the next nubby that's available to you on the matching. Slip stitch and then chain one and single crochet back into the same one. Chain one, skip to the next one. So that's a single crochet by itself so there's nothing to attach. Chain one and I'm gonna come into the next one and do a nubby. So chain one and get the next one. Chain one and come back in. So I'm at the middle point here. Okay, so the middle one's kind of unusual. So chain one, single crochet in the next, then chain one and go around that chain two space that's right in the middle. Pull through, chain one and just come to the next single crochet. So you're maintaining that unique look right in the middle. Chain one, come to the next one and it's a nubby right away. So that's a single crochet, chain one and come to the next one and match it. Chain one, come back. Then chain one and jump to the next single. There's nothing to attach. Chain one and jump. And this one attaches to the neighbor. This is um, also called braid joining if you ever, it's a different, it, there's different ways to braid join but this is what that is. So after that one's attached just single crochet in the next and then um, chain one and come into the one just before the corner and that's a nubby. So chain one and this is the last nubby on this one here. And then chain one and coming back in. Now because it's a corner what I want to do is that I'm gonna start in the corner, chain two and I would go diagonally to this one that is directly across. And just go right around it and just grab it and then chain two and then come back in. So now you've just attached not only here but also in the corner. So just turn your work and then begin the next one. So you've just attached so come in single crochet, chain one and come to the next nubby and chain one and come back. Single crochet into the next one. Okay there's nothing to attach there. Then come to the next one and that's a nubby so chain one and come to the next one. Do you understand the concept? It's just a matter of just aligning the stitches up. So it was really key importance for you to count those stitches when you were going around just to make sure that you were getting the right counts because it will throw off your borders. So this is the middle one. So chaining t uh, one, come to the middle one on this one, chain one and then jump to the next single crochet. Okay so um, chain one, single in the next, that's a nubby. I'm not very technical when it comes to crochet terms. I, for some people that's a problem but for me it's the way I remember things. My mom always taught me to be very visual and to come up with little slang hooks and memory hooks so that I could remember because my memory wasn't that great in mathematics and stuff. And I'm on the one just before the corner and I'm gonna get the last nubbly nubbly thing here and then I have a corner. So because the corner is here I want to attach to the corner while I'm here. So just come into the corner. So a single crochet, chain two, come around to the corner, chain two and then back. And you're just gonna complete the remaining of this round as if there is nothing to attach to because there is nothing to attach to. So you just immediately start in the next one and create those nubble and nubbly things so that you can be prepared for next time uh, when you go to attach that there's something there to attach to. 
So I will see you at the end of this round and then we're going to start covering the border next. So eventually you'll come all the way brown. I've got my last nub lead thing there and I'm just going to join to the beginning standing single crochet. So that will be it how you join it. So whether you're joining it to one side or two sides, I don't recommend joining it to three sides at any given point. So be strategic on how you join and it will make your life a lot easier. And I'd also take the opportunity to weave in the ends with the tapestry needle if that's uh, something that you can do. Um, it'll just save you time in the future. So without further ado, let's head on into the border next. As we get ready for the border, you're gonna notice that this kind of like buckles up a little bit and that's because it's just the way it's joined. You can always damp block it, just give it a good, um, a couple of spray, well a few sprays with the water bottle and lay it flat and just kind of yank on it and just let it air dry and therefore it can be good. This is actually kind of fine right now but sometimes I've done this concept and it kind of wants to lift off and that's not the way it should be. It's, it should be kind of flat. So we're gonna head on into the border yet. yet uh, now I have not practiced with this so it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> if I screw up you know that I'm reading it for the first time. So let's begin the border next. So you're going to, there's two rounds and we're gonna do the first one and we want to slip stitch to the second one over. So there's the corner. Just come right here and we're gonna slip stitch into that one and we're gonna do a single crochet. So let's do a standing single crochet into that one. Just like that. And then what we just need to do then is that we're gonna shell into the next chain two space. So it's these chain two spaces is where we're gonna operate. So we just attach the single crochet to this chain two space and then we're gonna shell into this one. And the shell is three double crochet. So just one, two, and three. And then chain two and three double crochet again. So one, two, and three. Once you get that done, you're gonna come to the next chain two space, single crochet, and then you're gonna jump to the next chain two space. Notice that it's the middle one. There's only three of these per side. So uh, of each square. So there's gonna be another shell there. So three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. Then you're gonna single crochet into the next chain two space. So these single crochets are in between to have balance. And then in this next chain two space is another shell. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So when we do the next single crochet, it's the one just before the corner and it's a single crochet that's the next chain two space. So noticing that we started off the one just after the corner is a single. The one just before the corner is also a signal or a single. So we're about to join the two together. So you have to span over top of these when you get there. So how we do that in order to keep the balance we're gonna come and see how they're attached. We're gonna play this space and this space and they're gonna play together. So we're going to put three double crochets in the first space and to do the spanning of it, we're gonna chain three and then come into the next space and do your three double crochet in there. And that will get you over that space of where they're joining. And then you're going to single crochet into the next chain two space which is the second in from the corner. So you're just gonna maintain the pattern as you know it. So each chain two space is gonna get a shell uh, and then the other chain two, uh, two spaces in between are just a single crochet. So it's kind of what you already know at this point. So you just gotta watch the ones that join. And then eventually we're gonna hit ourselves into the corner of your project. So when we get there I will show you how to turn and that's kind of what it's gonna look like at that point. So let's continue along. So I'm now just single crochet in the space just before the corner. So I'm keeping in balance but the corner is next. So this three double crochet and then chain two is technically how you technically turn a corner. So chain two and then put the three double crochets back into the same corner and that will allow you to turn. So here it's more like if you look at it it's almost a 90 degree angle. So we're now going to single crochet into the next for uh, chain two space which is the first one away from the corner and then you're just gonna maintain that. So uh, continue to go all the way around for me at this moment and I will see you at the end of this round and then we'll conclude off our final border.
with you today. So I've just come into the corner that just before I started remember and then we're just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet and move on to the second part of the border. The next part of this border is actually really quite easy. So let's begin. Right where I am I wanna chain four. So one, two, three, four. And I wanna follow these up and down. So come to the chain two space and I want to single crochet, chain three, and single crochet. I'm then going to chain four. So one, two, three, four and slip stitch to the next single crochet down here. And now I'm gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four and come to the next point. Single crochet, chain three and single crochet. And then chain four. So one, two, three, four and then coming down and slip stitching to the next single crochet. So it just builds it out a little bit more and that's what it looks like and we're gonna continue this and I'll see you on the first corner. So what happens when you're about to go through the ones that join? So just uh, chaining my four, slip stitching to the single crochet right before where they're joining and then chain four. So one, two, three, four. Come into this chain three space, single crochet, chain three and single crochet and then chain four and slip stitch into the next single. So you can see you're not gonna treat it any differently. You're just gonna continue to build and I will see you at the first corner in just a moment. When you get to the corner which is next I'm gonna chain my four to get there. There's a bit of a work involved to work out. So we're gonna um, single crochet first and then we're going to chain two only and then single crochet in and now I'm gonna chain three. So one, two, three, single crochet in and then chain two, one, two and single crochet in. So it looks like a fleur-de-lis when you get that done. Once you have that last part done just chain four again and then just keep on moving and continuing around. So just to recap it was a single crochet chain two, single crochet chain three, single crochet chain two, single crochet and then chaining four and jumping. Please do this all the way around and this will conclude off today's project. So just coming around to the last corner because we started right here when we did our slip stitching. We're gonna chain our four and then slip stitch it to the very beginning and then that's it. The project is complete. So you will take your time obviously um, working through the process of doing this. You can make the squares pretty much any size that are like uh, any combination. So if you wanted like five squares instead of whatever um, you can do that really quite easily with this pattern. So it's very adjustable as well. So I should put a note of that, of that in the pattern too. So that's it about it for today. We hope that you enjoy these free tutorials. Uh, compliments of yarnspirations.com. If you're ever looking for great deals on, on yarn to be able to purchase. Uh, there's over 7,000 free patterns on Yarnspirations. This is the place to be hanging out. So until next time have a good one and we hope to see you again really soon. Bye bye now. Mm -hmm.